Hey guys, Jay here and welcome back to another video. We are going to continue on from my previous video about film simulations and go over the other settings you can adjust to change the look of your image. Keep in mind that these settings will only apply to JPEG images and will not apply if you are shooting in RAW. However, all your setting adjustments will be rendered in real time through the camera viewfinder and LCD, so it also serves as a visual guide to aid you on your personal shooting experience. Film simulations form the base from which you can then continue to change the following settings to really personalize the look of your own image. Today I'll be using the X100V as an example, so depending on your Fujifilm camera model, some of these settings will not be applicable, so just pick the ones that are relevant to you. I set up a scene showcasing a good variance in color and light to give you a fair comparison of what each setting does. This scene was shot outdoors with fixed aperture and fixed ISO at 160 and shutter speed set to auto unless specified. The film simulation I used is Acros and Provia and the white balance is set to auto. Let's work our way down from film simulations. The first setting is monochromatic color. This setting only applies to the black and white film simulations Acros and Monochrome. What it does is change the warmness or coolness of your black and white images. While this isn't personally something I would ever use, some may find it visually appealing. Next is grain effect. Traditional film had unique qualities and character to them, and a big reason why is due to the way different films render grain. Fujifilm allows you to digitally produce grain to bring your images closer to a film-like look. It may be considered a gimmick, however with Fujifilm's extensive knowledge of film, the grain effect can produce pleasing results. Roughness controls the texture of the grain. Strong roughness will make your images appear more gritty. The size determines how big or small each individual grain particle is. This is a cropped look comparing no grain to all possible combinations of grain effects. Color chrome effect controls the tonality of reds, yellows and greens. It will enhance these colors by selectively increasing the saturation and contrast. It is a very subtle difference, but it can work really well in environments where these colors are very apparent. Color chrome effects blue is strictly for the blue color. Fujifilm's color science is known for rendering very unique and pleasing blues, as many Fuji users would describe as Fuji blues. Chrome effects blue simply enhances it even more. I would imagine this setting will work very well where there is abundant clear blue skies or very modern industrial architecture with a lot of cool chrome or steel materials. White balance will modify how the camera will expose the scene in the most natural way. In most cases, shooting outside has different lighting conditions from shooting indoors with artificial lighting. Setting the white balance to auto is generally the best way to go for any situation. However, if you know exactly what lighting situation you are shooting in, the other settings might be more accurate. If you want to be very precise, there are three custom white balance settings you can assign. All you need to do is have a neutral color, like a white piece of paper placed within the scene. Position the focus square so that it is within that color and press down the shutter button. The camera will calculate the most optimal white balance based on the color it focused on. Every white balance setting also allows you to fine tune the amount of red or blue hues. Here are examples of what each quadrant of the grid can result in. Keep in mind I used a mid-range setting for all. This is essentially color grading in camera and it is highly customizable, so I encourage you to play around with it and find what works for you. Moving on, the dynamic range. It essentially controls the contrast of a scene. For example, choosing a lower value will increase the contrast in an environment with less highlight and shadow difference, and higher value will decrease the contrast in environments with greater highlight and shadow difference. Dynamic range priority is essentially everything in the dynamic range setting, but it will also control highlights and shadows to make sure as much detail in the respective areas 
are preserved. When this setting is turned on, the dynamic range and tone curve settings cannot be set. The camera will evaluate the scene and automatically change dynamic range percentage and shadow and highlight levels to create the optimal outcome. The tone curve setting isn't available in older models of Fujifilm cameras, which had separate settings for both highlights and shadows. With the tone curve consolidating both highlights and shadows into one setting, and the live preview while making adjustments, it makes it a lot easier to visualize how the two settings will work with one another and how it affects the overall images. Shadows will deepen the darker parts of the image and highlights will brighten the lighter parts. Pretty straightforward. But by tweaking it a bit, it can create dramatic effect to any image. Color will increase or decrease the saturation, best used sparingly since most of the film simulations are fairly close to each other in terms of color saturation. Sharpness will digitally sharpen or soften hard edges. Hard edges are more apparent in areas where there is more contrast in light or color. The X-Trans sensor on Fujifilm cameras omits the need for an anti-aliasing filter, which makes images render fairly sharp by default. So adjust the sharpness sparingly when moving into the positive values. Noise reduction is self-explanatory and this setting works better when shooting at high ISOs. As you know, the higher the ISO, the more digital noise in an image. Noise reduction attempts to smooth out the noise. This setting is, in my personal opinion, not important for photography. In general, digital noise is well handled on newer Fujifilm cameras, so going into the positive values may do more damage than good. If, however, you wish to preserve or enhance the noise, you could push it into the negative values, but do so sparingly, especially if you already have the grain setting active. Finally, we have clarity, which is similar to sharpness, but instead of just defining hard edges, it will apply digital sharpening to the entire image. I'm not too familiar with this setting myself, but I will let you decide how important this effect is for your images. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of powerful editing capability built into the Fujifilm camera to allow for some really creative, straight out of camera results. In a lot of cases, the convenience of having a pleasing image without any time spent on post-processing gives you more time to focus and enjoy your photographic journey. I hope this video has helped. If you have found it helpful, let me know and do share it with anyone who is new to the Fujifilm system. Thanks again, and until next time.